Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is last one in the series of videos related to motion analysis. I am going to explain a very powerful and commonly used tool specially for trajectory filtering and localization of moving objects in context of machine VN applications, that is particle filters. Just to refresh our memories, object tracking is a major part of motion analysis system. Just like we track anything moving in our field of view, the object tracking implemented in context of machine vision will also follow three key steps. To establish these three steps, suppose you want to track your friend in a crowded area. To successfully track him or her, the first thing you need is to find or to localize him. After localization, you will keep following him at all time instances and while tracking him, you will start analyzing his motion to predict or estimate his behavior, where he is trying to go or what he is trying to do. Exactly these three steps are used to track any moving object in motion analysis system as well. Talking specifically about motion analysis systems, there are several issues that make object tracking and motion analysis quite complex. Issues such as loss of information when a 3D world is projected on a 2D image makes object representation error prone and hence tracking in successive frames may become difficult. A self-explanatory list of some other problem is given over here that hinders easiness in motion analysis. As there are several aspects that make object tracking difficult, we make use of some assumptions to simplify the process. For example, tracking algorithm assumes that motion to be tracked is smooth and the object is moving either with constant velocity or constant acceleration. Additionally, relevant prior information related to the environment and object to be tracked may also be utilized. Numerous approaches for object tracking have been proposed and are being used in real life systems. The basic difference in these approaches come from the fact that how they answer certain aspects. For example, which object representation is suitable for tracking, what image features are to be used, and how motion, appearance, and shape of the object be modeled. Therefore, important things for object tracker are object representation, selection of image features for tracking, object detection, and object tracking methods. Various object tracking methods shown in this tree diagram differs how they approach these aspects. Coming towards the main topic of this video, that is particle filters, it lies under the category of probabilistic or statistical techniques. So before any further ado, let's start with particle filters by asking three questions. If answer to these three questions is yes, then you may use particle filters. Keep in mind that particle filters and similar techniques are used when we are unable to measure something directly. So we use another route to measure it. So the first question is, is there something we want to know? Answer to it is, of course, yes. The second question is, can we measure something related to what we want to know? If the answer to this question is once again yes, that is, we can measure something related to what we want to know. Then we arrive at the last question of, do we know something about the relationship between the observed and the real thing? As we cannot measure the real thing, but we can observe something related to the real thing, then we must also know the relationship between the real and the observed thing. Therefore, if the answer to all these questions is yes, then you may use particle filters to approximate and track something which you want to know. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that technically particle filters are called Monte Carlo simulations. In certain literature, if you find Monte Carlo simulations with importance resampling, then it is nothing but the particle filters which we are going to study. I'll explain particle filters through an example, but before that, here's a summary of basic working algorithm. The first step is to initially make a guess about what you want to know thing. This guess might be a random one or based on any a prior information, which if available, 
then the guess may be a targeted one. The next step is then to observe the quantity that has some relation to what we want to know thing. Based on the observation, your initial guess will be rated. Those guesses which are far from your observed quantity shall be assigned minimum weight, while those guesses which look promising shall be given more weightage. The next step would be to discard all particles that have low weights or we can say particles representing wrong guesses will be discarded. These discarded particles are placed on top of those particles which were representing good guesses. Therefore, total number of particles will remain constant. As the last step in the first iteration, we will apply motion model because most probably the object which we are trying to track or find must be moving. Therefore, our particles should also move. However, we don't know the exact movement pattern. Therefore, particles are moved randomly in the perceived direction of motion. After this, we make another observation, calculate weights again, delete particles having low weights, regenerate as much particles as are deleted on top of particles having large weights, apply motion model and repeat it again and again unless stability is achieved. Now let me take you through a simple example step by step to track and follow a quadcopter moving in one dimension only. So the issue at hand is to track our quadcopter flying over this not so beautiful landscape. To keep things simple, this funny quadcopter can move in horizontal direction only like this. Additionally, our quadcopter is equipped with a rain sensor that can give us the height of the quadcopter above ground. Before starting the implementation of particle filter to track this quadcopter, we need to understand what we have and what we want to know. If you remember, the first question if we want to implement particle filters was, is there something which we want to know? The answer would be yes, we want to know the horizontal location of the quadcopter. The second question was, can we measure something related to what we want to know? The answer here would be once again yes. We can measure height of the quadcopter using a rain sensor present on it. The last question was, do we know anything about the relation between the observed quantity and the real thing? The answer would once again be yes. We have a map of the scenery that gives us some information about the horizontal location of the quadcopter if we provide it with height data. For example, if I tell you that currently the height of the quadcopter is this much, then there are certain locations which fulfill this height data. That is, quadcopter can be over here or over here or it might be over here, for example, or it might be over here. There is no other place where this much height can be sensed by the rain sensor. To start, based on height, quadcopter can be anywhere. Therefore, we will generate particles on all locations where each particle represents a guess of quadcopter's location. The next step would be to assign weights to these guesses based on their correctness. Obviously, some particles are representing better guesses than the others. So, if we see the height data and try to figure out which guesses are better, then particles representing those guesses would be assigned with larger weights. Larger weight is represented by thickness of a particle like this. In the same way, if we assign weights to each particle, then we may get something like this. After this, what is the importance of particles having lower weights? Obviously, they have no importance as they represent poor guesses. So, we will keep particles having weights larger than a th certain threshold and delete all other particles. These deleted particles will be generated on top of the particles having larger weights. This step is called resampling and more specifically importance resampling because there are other ways to resample as well. We will have this kind of particle distribution after resampling. A thing to note over here is that total number of particles will remain same and after resampling, weights of all particles will be reset. 
these particles are now representing probable locations of our quadcopter. As the last step of the first iteration, we know that our quadcopter is moving in horizontal direction, so we will move our particles randomly in horizontal direction. Now things will get easy. As we have gone through one iteration, in the next iteration we are again going to observe height and based on it assign weights to all particles like this. We will perform importance resampling once again and we would be left with this. Application of motion model will yield these locations of the particle. Now we are going to reiterate this process until we get stability. So here's how things will proceed. As we keep on iterating, particles will settle eventually and will keep a track of the moving object. Following the same methodology, particle filters may be implemented on any tracking example. Implementation on any programming language is quite straightforward if you follow the simple methodology explained in this video. I hope viewers would be able to implement particle filters on their own. But if you find any difficulty, then you may always contact me through comments or my email.